What's up, everybody? Merry Christmas. Uh, if you're on Patreon, you might be getting this on Christmas Day. Either way, welcome back to the channel. A bit of good news. Stefan just had his baby girl this last weekend, but that means it's only going to be me for a couple weeks. But the end goal is to get Stefan on the channel every single week, and hopefully that happens soon, and it should be both of us. Today is a bit different. You know how I like cases. I like them a little bit different. And I keep coming across the story of Kenneth White. And while I was researching that case, I came across another case that was very, very similar. Today, I will be talking about both of these cases. They happened on the same highway in separate states, but only a few months apart in time. What actually happened is what really makes these two stories uh, eerily similar and very, very interesting. So stick around because you won't want to miss the second story in today's episode. Kenneth White's story starts not too long ago on October 18th, 2017. Kenneth White was a 32-year-old man who lived in Mount Morris, Michigan. He had four children and seemed to be a hard-working man. He was riding passenger seat in an Econoline van on the way home uh, from where he was working at a construction site. He was being given a ride home at around 8.30 p.m. from his co-worker and friend, Steve Amthor. They were traveling on I-75 in Vienna Township, which is about 16 miles outside of Flint, Michigan. As the van passed under the Dodge Road overpass, a six-pound rock was thrown off the overpass. The rock crashed through the windshield of the van and struck Kenneth White in the head and chest. Unfortunately, after this incident, Kenneth would no longer be able to go home to his family. He didn't survive. So who did this, and why did this happen? You know, a lot of times, I mean, basically every episode that we put up in most episodes of any true crime channel or podcast seems like an, like a pointless loss of life pretty much every time. But as you'll see when we get into this, this was just so ridiculously, it just, it just didn't have to happen. It, it could have been avoided so easily. So that day on October 18th, 2017, five teenage friends who all went to the Clio High School in Vienna Township got together to hang out. They decided that they wanted to play a game they called overpassers. This is where you throw a rock off an overpass, and you hit a car and you get points when you hit the car. It's called a dinger when you hit the car, and supposedly they would bet money on this. And that's, that's pretty interesting because I remember from when I was a kid hearing of people or other kids doing stuff like this, I've never known it to be an actual game, but you know you kind of always hear stories, and I'm pretty sure I've heard stories of something like like this happening. Um, but you know, this was this was real bad. The teenagers' names were Trevor Gray, who was 15 years old, Alexander Miller, 15 years old, Mike and Payne, 16 years old, Mark Sikelski, 16 years old, and Kyle Anger, who was the oldest at 17 years old. The teens decided they wanted to do this, and they picked up a bunch of large rocks from a dead-end street in their town. They loaded the rocks up into the back of Kyle Anger's truck and went to the overpass. Who knew that what they were going to do would end up ending someone's life? The driver of the van hit by a six-pound rock in Michigan is speaking out about the deadly incident for the first time. Stephen Amthor says he's devastated he could not save his friend's life. Kenneth White was killed when the rock smashed through the windshield. Five high school students are charged with second-degree murder for allegedly throwing the rock. I don't blame myself what happened. I, I blame myself like I couldn't do enough. Stephen Amthor says Kenneth White's death left him feeling angry and numb. He was driving White, his employee, home after a day's work. They were talking about baseball when a rock suddenly smashed through the windshield. We were less than five miles from his house and... Next thing I know, I'm pulled over trying to keep him from bleeding out. The van that Kenneth White was riding passenger in was actually the fifth car to be hit, as four other cars had already been hit and pulled off the highway. No one in the other cars were injured, luckily, but they had already called the police and they were waiting on them. Police discovered 20 rocks at the scene, and they immediately launched an intense homicide investigation. They offered up $2,500 to anyone that could help figure out who did this. A quote from Genesee's County Undersheriff Chris Swanson states, We have a family here. This guy's got a fiancé, he's got a child on the way, and he's on his way back from a hard day's work, and out of the blue comes a rock and loses his life. 
we want to find out who's responsible for this. The southbound lanes for I-75 were closed for multiple days during the investigation. After they hit the van with the rock, they left the scene, the teenagers that is. They went to a local McDonald's and ate, seemingly like, like nothing had happened. You know, I assume that they believe nothing bad did happen, nothing close to what actually happened. You know, what could they have expected, though? I mean, I don't know, you know, they knew they had hit someone's windshield with a six-pound rock, a pretty big rock. I mean, they don't know exactly how much it weighs, but they know it's pretty big. And, you know, it they should have known, obviously. That's That's one of the big points of this case. And, you know, you should know what could happen, but at the time, they're not thinking of it. And they just go off and eat at McDonald's like it's any other night of the week. The teens also threw car parts, including an engine part and a brake rotor off the bridge. And they threw several tractor tires as well. Uh, some, some of those big tires that you you see on tractors. <laughs> Two days after the incident, all the teens had heard about the death, obviously. you know They're watching the news. They know what happened. They text each other in a series of texts stating that no one knew who they were and that they wouldn't be able to find out. If they all just stayed quiet, they believed they would get away with this crime. There was also evidence from Snapchat that shows they were planning an alibi. The police received a tip through social media, and I can't find information on exactly what this tip was. It might just not be out there. Uh, But it came through, and the police were able to to identify Kyle Anger's truck that fled the scene. Remember, Kyle Anger... He's the oldest uh, of the of the group of teens. He was 17 when this happened. And they had used his truck to fill the rocks up and actually go to the overpass. And somehow they were able to figure out what McDonald's the teens went to. And they viewed the CCTV footage from inside the restaurant. Through this footage and with the identification of the owner of the truck, Kyle, they were able to figure out the identity of all of the teens involved. The following day, warrants were issued for their arrests and the police contacted the families. Because they were all under the age of 18, they were not arrested, but rather told that they must surrender to the police by 10 p.m. that day. So the next day, it was announced at a press conference that five teens were arrested and charged with second-degree murder, conspiracy to commit second-degree murder, and six counts of malicious destruction of property. All of the charges are felonies. And the attorneys for four out of five of the teens would ask for them to be charged as minors. The one not included in this was Kyle Anger. See, Kyle had his own attorney. Like I said before, he was the oldest out of all five of them. From the beginning, all of the teens seemed to be going against Kyle in this. You know, again, he was the oldest. He had the truck they collected the rocks in. And all of the other teens claimed that it was all his idea. And also, they were able to determine that the rock that was thrown and actually hit Kenneth White was thrown by Kyle and no one, none of the other teens. Judge Joseph Farah, who was the judge uh, for this case, rejected the motion to try the four teens as minors. Like I said before, they were all charged with second-degree murder, but the four younger teens all pled guilty to manslaughter. Lay low for a while and everything will be fine. Only way we get in trouble is if a and I won't say the word, spelled rats, so you better hope he didn't give in already or else we're going to the slammer. The proposal for juvenile sentencing is rejected. Defense attorneys would claim that the judge denying this motion uh, was a political move. So they also claimed that because the other teens were younger than Kyle Anger, that they should not be tried as adults in the same way. So what do you what do you think about this? Uh, do you think that these four 15 and 16 year olds should be tried as adults or minors? Like I said, Kyle Anger was 17 years old. Um, and you know they're arguing that he should be tried as an adult, but that the 15 and 16 year olds should be tried as minors for some reason. And honestly, I think that's pretty weird um, because they're not that much different in age. <laughs> you know they're they're all teenage boys. I mean, you know, they probably all have a very similar mindset. Um, So I guess it just depends. But what do you think about that? The prosecutor in this case, David Layton, said that he did not believe the boys intended to kill anyone when they threw the rocks. Again, I said the prosecutor. Now, that's probably true. You know, he's quoted as saying, I don't think they said, okay, 
we're going to kill Kenneth White when he comes driving down the road. But I do think they said, we're going to throw a rock at the next car that goes by and try to hit it. (laughs) Which is a pretty weird quote by the prosecutor. I mean, obviously that's what they're doing. The whole game is to throw rocks off of the side of the overpass and try to hit cars. I think what he's just saying is that it wasn't premeditated murder necessarily. You know, they weren't trying to kill anyone. But with that said, um, obviously, like I said before, they should have known better. And he states that as well. He states that they should have known better and that they should have known they could kill someone. And that's why this is second degree murder. And again, like I said, that's the prosecutor saying that. And that makes sense. And, you know, if you ask me, it it sucks, but it does seem like... Second degree murder. I mean, the whole thing is so awful. But I don't, you know, I don't believe they were, you know, trying to kill someone. But again, they should have known better. And that's why they should get second degree murder. So Kyle Anger pled guilty to second degree murder with the request that the now 18 year old, and he was so, he was 18 whenever he actually pled guilty, would be sentenced under manslaughter guidelines, which would carry a maximum sentence of 15 years in prison. You know, remember, second degree murder carries a maximum of life in prison. So, I don't know that he's he's pleading guilty to second degree murder again with just the request that he's sentenced under manslaughter guidelines. I don't know what's up with that. That's kind of weird. Kyle Anger would end up being sentenced to three to twenty years in prison. However, the time he was already he had already spent in jail would have been taken into consideration once sentenced. Which makes sense. That's how it works. That's how it, that's how it always works, right? But he had spent 740 days in jail from the time he was arrested. You know, it just was taking forever to actually, you know, go through with everything. Um, and this was a comp- this is a pretty complicated case. It seems like to me, you know, and and that means that after his sentence, his actual sentencing, he would be eligible for parole, and only over a year from when he actually went to prison. I think it's like. 13 months or something like that. So it's, you know, it's pretty interesting. He was also ordered to pay Kenneth White's family $7,000 in restitution. And this is really where I want to have a conversation with you guys about, you know, we're going to get into the second case um, and everyone else's sentences. But what do you think about this? Because this was the big one, you know. So he gets sentenced and only like 13 months, something like that, after he gets sentenced, he's eligible for parole. And, you know, Kenneth White's family is very upset about this. Um, you can watch videos of them. I'll, I'll, I'll try to put one in. It just depends on if they're copyrighted or not. But if, if I can't put one in because of copyright, go look it up. Uh, they're very, very upset with this. They have uh, mul- they said multiple things in court. They said multiple things to, uh, to to TV stations who were covering the case outside of the courtroom and inside as well. And, um, yeah, what do you think about this sentencing? You know, again, he was 17 years old when this happened. But honestly, to me personally, 17 is uh, it's pretty close to be, yeah, sentenced as an adult. I mean, so, yeah, he definitely was not sentenced what a lot of people think he should have been sentenced to. Now, what's going on with the other four teens is kind of interesting. Uh, it's kind of weird. Now, they are still in sentencing limbo. They have not been sentenced, and it's been three years. The last thing I can find online about their sentencing is still from two months ago. And so pretty much what happened was the defense attorneys and the prosecutor actually came to an agreement um, originally that they would um, – basically be tried as minors. And the prosecutor, like I said, agreed. But when the judge denied that, it sort of threw everything for a loop. And the four took back their plea, right? And this prompted the prosecutor to ask to drop the charge. And he wanted to basically recharge the four as minors. Now, the judge wouldn't actually sign the paperwork that would allow that. So the case has gone to the Court of Appeals. Now, this has been three years, and most likely what will happen, at least, and if I'm, if anyone has anything to say about this, please say it, um, but what it seems like to me is, since this has been taking so long, once they actually get sentenced, regardless on if they've been sentenced as adults or minors, 
they will probably not serve any time. Uh, and if they do serve time, it will not be for very long because they're not going to get a sentence as high as Kyle Anger, most likely, no matter what, right? And yeah, if their sentence as minors, definitely not. And even if their sentence as adults, which again, they haven't been yet, they probably won't serve very much time because they've already been in jail for, you know, serving for, for a while. And, and that, again, like, like I said, that will go towards uh, time served. So more than likely, they'll be out very quickly. Um, so that's, that's a very interesting thing. You know, I'll make sure to update somehow if something changes. I'll be, I'll be paying attention to it. And that update would probably come in the form of a community post. So pay attention to those because I, like I like to make those. So at the beginning of this episode, I said there was another case uh, we would be talking about uh, that had eerily similar details. So, yeah, we're about to get into that. I just want to say before we start, unfortunately, there's not as much information about this case, and it really sucks that there's not. Um, I, I did a lot of research. I think I found everything that I could. If you know some more about it, please let us know in the comments. But on December 17th, 2017, just two months after the Kenneth White incident, Marquise Bird was riding in the passenger seat in his friend's car on I-75. This was the same highway that Kenneth was on as well, but this was in Toledo, Ohio. At around 10 p.m., a large sandbag was dropped off the Indiana Avenue overpass and smashed through the windshield of the car that Marquis Bird was riding in. The sandbag went through the windshield of the car and struck Marquis in the head. You don't know what hit him? No, my windshield is like smashed out. She is huh? laid out on my seat. I think this windshield might have smacked his head. He was rushed to a Toledo area hospital with severe head injuries, but unfortunately he passed three days later. Marquise was 22 years old, he was engaged, he was excited to get married, and he left behind a two-year-old son. So as you can see, this is a very, very similar case. I mean, Almost exactly. It only happened two months later on the same highway, just in a different state, and with a sandbag instead of a rock. Um, it's, it's pretty insane, honestly. It's pretty insane that this happened so close on the same highway. And similar to Kenneth White's case as well, four teenage boys were able to be found and were arrested for this. It's unfortunate that this case, again, does not have near the near the amount of information as the Kenneth White case. And, you know, so the boys seem to be playing a similar game as the boys in the Kenneth White case. They started throwing rocks off the side of the overpass, but they found two sandbags and threw them off the bridge as well. The first sandbag did not hit a car, and the second one did. And when they heard the sound of the second sandbag basically hitting a car, I mean, it's going to be a pretty loud noise, they tried to flee the scene, but were spotted. The 14 boys in this case were younger than the ones in the Kenneth White case. And, you know, that might be one of the reasons why as much information isn't out there. Three of them were 14 years old, and one of them was 13. But, you know, at the same time, one of the boys in the, in the other case we just talked about was 15 years old. And that, I mean, that's only a year older than three of the ones in this case, right? And only, I mean, most of them were 16, right? So three of the other ones were 16, three of these are 14. That's only two years apart. And I know that there is a difference between 14 and 16, but this is what makes these two cases very interesting. And what I'm about to say uh, with that, so the four boys were arrested and brought into juvenile court on December 20th for felonious assault charges. But the charges were upgraded to murder once Marquis Bird passed away. One of the 13-year-old boys who was arrested, or basically the only 13-year-old boy, all the other ones were 14, he admitted to being the one who actually threw the sandbag. He pled guilty to the charges I stated above. Judge Denise Cuban, I think that's how you say it, it could be Cuban actually, was the judge in this case, and she didn't sentence the teens as adults in this case. And she sentenced all four of them to serve time in the Department of Youth Services. So she didn't sentence them as adults, like I said. But the other ones are. And so that's really part of what makes it interesting as well. Three of the boys got four years in juvie. 
and the boy who actually threw the sandbag was to serve his time until he turned 21. So they would all be out at 18. He would be out at 21 because they were all 14 when it happened, uh, besides from the 13-year-old. Uh, now, here's where it gets interesting as well. The judge would later suspend these sentences for lighter ones. The judge reduced the sentences of all four boys to four to eight months in a youth treatment center. This was included for the boy who actually threw the sandbag. So yeah, a pretty big um, bombshell right there. The Yeah. So they all got four to eight months in a youth treatment center. And the judge would say that this that her decision was made based on the they're only thirteen or fourteen years old and she doesn't want she doesn't want them to go to juvenile you know, she doesn't want them to go there and learn things. She wants them to basically go to a treatment center and get help and come out the other side, uh, you know, more productive and ready for society. Now, that's what she says. Honestly, I don't really want to give my opinion here. Uh, it's, not, it's not even that I don't want to give my opinion. It's just it's kind of hard to know exactly how you should feel in this case. And what's interesting uh, between the two cases is, you know, the prosecutor – and the defense attorney for the Kenneth White case, both of them thought that the boys in that case should be tried as minors, right? And But the judge in that case said no. So this, is, this comes down 100% to an opinion, a difference of opinion in these two judges. And But I really, really want to know what everyone thinks. I know I've said that once or twice in this. I try to say it all the time because, especially with these episodes where it's just by myself, I want to have a conversation. And also, I just want to read your comments. And this one especially because I feel like, you know, if you not a lot of people have covered either one of these cases, right? And so when you go on YouTube and look up anything about these cases, they're all just news stories. And they might have... 15 to 20 comments on each video. And every single one of these comments, I mean, almost every single one of them will say that all of these boys in both cases should have gotten 15 years, 30 years. They should have gotten life. All of these cases say that. And this video will probably get way more comments than that. So I really want to know how many, you know, how many people think their sentences were too light. Um, how what they should have done you know look two lives were ended because of all of the, the the choices that these teenage right boys made and now i say teens this whole time and that's just how i wrote this um but you know one of them was 17 at the time and i said this before i mean i don't know if 17 is not that much different than 18 in my opinion um but on the other side of it, the person that threw this, the kid that threw the sandbag, right? Well, he was 13 years old. And there's a difference between 13 and 17. And, um, you know, and there, and there's, there's, I don't know. It's, it's, it's really interesting. And I'm really, you know, I'm looking forward to seeing what people, uh, what you guys actually comment on this and what you say. Uh, cause I think it's gonna, yeah, I don't know. I, I don't really know actually what everyone will say, but yeah, you know, like I said in the beginning, this is just one of the most senseless cases that, you know, they're all senseless, right? I mean, uh, all, all who, why is anyone doing this in, to anyone, right? That's, I mean, true, you know, yeah, true crime shouldn't even exist, but it does. And so it's all senseless. But this in particular, because these are just teenage boys playing a game in their head, right? Throwing these rocks, not thinking about the consequences of their actions, and like I just said, two people lost their lives over this. And it's just, you know, and they both had kids, you know, and Kenneth had one on the way. You know, Marquise had a two-year-old. And, uh, yeah, I mean, they were both, they were both engaged. Neither one was married. They were both um, waiting to get married. So it's just senseless. It's just a sad, senseless crime in both cases. But like I said, let me know what you think. Uh, about it let me know any of your comments thank you for watching this and we have merch it's in the, it will be in the description below it's kind of basic right now but it's there we have a patreon that's in the description as well subscribe if you like it we do videos every single week and yeah thank you very much you must be destroyed. See you later.